person there. You're on. Well, hello, everybody. It's just so good to be back here today. We're broadcasting a little differently than we normally do. Some of the places that we would have been broadcasting from, of course, were closed up because of this pandemic event, this uh, coronavirus. But we are blessed today to still be standing here for God woke us up this morning. So again, I just want to welcome you to From the Heart. I am your host, none other than uh, Dr. John Milburn. Again, we thank God for being here. I have as my co-host today, none other than the absolutely fabulous Sister London Washington. It's just so good to have her there. So, uh, uh, Sister London, why don't you say hello to the people? Well, hello, everybody. The show goes on, huh, Dr. Milburn? We still get to hear this great uh, topic that that Dr. Milburn is going to talk about today, just for encouragement, and uh, we're glad that we have other ways to do things until further notice, huh? available uh, so often we can't get into certain places you know and i'm just going to give you a couple of examples uh, uh first of all i'm i'm a uh, mechanical contractor that means i do all the heating and air conditioning and a variety of other things to go along with it i went to one of the supply houses to pick up a part for another preacher uh just on yesterday and i had to call inside the building once i got into the parking lot they allowed me to come to the outer door. And when I came to the outer door, they came, opened up the door just enough to find out what it is that I needed, which I gave them the proper information. Uh, they handed me a package. I put it in the van and went back and waited for them to run my card and everything like that. And I didn't even have to sign anything, which is highly unusual. Mm. And he just kind of slipped the paper out through the door. Wow. The same thing happened when I went to go get contacts. But one of the things that we find is so many places that we can't go, but thank God in the name of Jesus that we can always go to God in prayer. Amen. That means we can have faith in him regardless of the time of day. Uh, I don't care whether your phone works or doesn't work, whether you have utilities on or you don't. We can go to God in prayer. But the only thing it takes is for us to simply have faith in his word. Amen. And even the scripture lets us know that without faith, it is impossible to please God. Yes. And one thing I said in the earlier broadcast is, above all, we want to be uh, those that please God and keep him pleased in who we are and what we are. Yes. And that doesn't take very much. But one of the things is we're facing this this uh, virus that's out here is affecting the whole world. Mm-hmm. Uh, we have to remember that the things that they're telling us to do are simply, uh, I would call them basically something that we should have got from home training. Right. Uh, they're telling us to keep our hygiene up, which we should be doing that, wash our hands throughout the day, use soap, hot water preferably, wash your hands for at least 20 seconds, uh, you know, uh, use hand sanitizer when you can't get to soap and water. Well, I kind of thought that this is something that we should be doing anyway, whether there's a virus, any type of sickness out there or not. This is things that we should be doing. So what they're telling us is what we're supposed to do either way that we go. But here's the thing about it. We are getting scared, uh, running inside the house, afraid to talk to people afraid to have anyone near us, afraid to open my door, even afraid to come outside. Mm-hmm. But you know, when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me, I have to understand that he said that God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of love, of a, uh, of a power and a strong mind. Yes. And one of the things that I always like to tell people nowadays is, it says God has not given us the spirit of fear. And if we use fear as an acronym, we find out that fear, F-E-A-R, stands for false evidence appearing real. So God has not given me the spirit of false evidence appearing real. Now, you may ask the question, well, what is this false evidence? The false evidence is listening to everything that everybody else is saying. It is holding what the world is saying over the, world, the word of God. 
And we have to understand that when God speaks, that settles it. So if we go to have his word uh, over everything else that they were hearing in the world, that means we have to go to the scripture. We have to go to his word. And this, when we do this type of thing, then we great, we uh, gain a deeper understanding of what God has for us to do. But one of the problems with this is that we don't want to go and study the word of God the way that we're supposed to. The scripture even says, study to show thyself approved unto God, mm -hmm. a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, but lightly, and that's the important part, lightly dividing the word of truth. So when we lightly divide the word of truth, we get a deeper understanding, we uh, get a deeper revelation of what that word is saying. So our spirit, our faith, our hope, our belief in him becomes illuminated, even to the point that people can see that there is a difference, that there's something greater in us that, than there is in the world. And when we think of it that way, we can stand firm on his word. So I don't have to worry about stepping outside. I don't have to worry about doing the errands that are needful for me to do. I don't have to worry about going to the grocery store. I don't have to worry about any of these things because he said that he would never leave me or forsake me. And here's the thing that I love about God so much, that he has friends benefits and all that he does. He will neither leave me nor forsake me. He won't even leave my seed, my children, my children's children, begging bread because he loves me so much because he's in me and I'm in him that he's gonna make sure that I am taken care of. Yes. And one thing that we fail to realize so often, we say, well, you know, uh, that, that's Jesus. Jesus can go out there. He could heal the sick. He could raise the dead. He could uh, cause the lame to walk. Yes. He could take the maim and grow out new limbs. He could do whatever he wanted to do. And I say, well, you know, that's true. That was Jesus. And you believe that Jesus did these things. But here's the part about it that we don't really consider. Jesus did these things. And then the scripture says, let this mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus. And then Jesus turned right back around with that same mind of God, that same mind filled with the Holy Spirit, that same mind in a natural man who later became a full God. He was both God and man here on earth, but when he operated on earth, he operated not as a God, he operated as a man, yeah. showing us he was the perfect example of what we could do and what we could be in God. And then he, in his manly vision, uh, knowing that God was in charge of all things, turned around and told us that anything that he did, that we shall be able to do these and greater. Yes. And I got news for you. If we can listen to his word, if that mind of Christ can be in us, and if we are supposed to be able to do the things that Christ did and greater, Man. what is it that should be impossible to us? Well, I think about Paul when he came off the shipwreck and came up on the shore and a viper came out of the fire and latched down to his hand and the people that watched him be bitten by that snake waited for him to swell up and die. But he simply shook it off. Wow. Sometimes we need to learn simply how to shake things off. Yes. If we can possibly learn how to shake it off and stand on the firm word of God. And the thing about this is when we stand on God's word, we're on a solid foundation. Yes. We worry about the foundation cracking because we're looking at it from a human standpoint, from a human view. We're looking at it through our natural eyes and listening to it through natural ears. But we've got to open up our mind, open up our heart. We have to do these things so that the point of the matter is that when we open up our mind, that we are hearing what the Spirit saith unto the church. Yes. Even the Scripture says, he that hath an ear to hear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying unto the church. So these are some of the things that we have to do. And remember, God's word is true. He said before his word shall fail, both heaven and earth shall pass, pass away. away. And, and Sister Lund, you've even heard me say many times, since the heaven and earth is still here, since I'm still here, that means God's word still must be true, regardless of what else has happened. Yes. So we have to think about these things and again stand on his word. And I know I've been going for a little while, 
Sister London, uh, I found you to be a woman of faith, yes. and I, I, I enjoy being around you. Our conversation is always good. It's always upbeat in the midst of all of these problems. Oh, yeah. And what, what are you looking at in these times that we're going through right now? Well, you know, um, I know people need to hear this message that you're talking about right now. And, it, you know, if you are a believer in God and, and you've had all these wonderful experiences in the past, that we all know that God is always going to look out for us and he's always going to make a way. And um, I think I posted something on Facebook earlier. You know, everybody's talking about what's happening, but I just have the joy of Jesus in my heart. And uh, I just wanted to say that, that I'm so happy in God right now that um that i'm here and then I, nobody can take no one or anything can take the joy of jesus out of your heart once you once you receive salvation and you understand who god is nobody can take that away and then god gives you an understanding that whatever's going on he he's going to make a way and i feel like this god is so big and he is our all in all he can just make this disappear whenever he see fit just like that, just like it appeared, it can appear, and then people will be at all still. Um, I just consider it still a blessing to be here, like you said. The world is still here, <laughs> heaven is still here, the earth is still here, and we're still here. So that means God's word is already true and it reigns, you know. So, you know, I appreciate that you are preaching to the people and let them know and reminding them because I, I'm realizing not just those that maybe that don't know God right now or haven't made him his personal uh, savior, but a lot of uh, people that are uh, saying that they're saints and our believers are uh, very upset. And a lot of times you hear the negativity coming from those mouths and we are the ones that are supposed to uphold God mm. we're supposed to uh, let people know God has got us and all we gotta do is look at us um, and see what he's doing for us and even if something comes your way he will either bless it not to touch you because that's what it says in Psalms uh, 91 he won't even come nigh your dwelling but we're looking at it but it hasn't come nigh your dwelling and then if something just happens to Come your way, God we can remove it. He can heal you, you know, because a lot of us have been through some things, you know, some of our loved ones, and you still see the work of God. He is working and he is healing. He's preserving and just taking care of us. So that's what we have to look at, you know, um, Dr. Milburn. I was looking at this scripture, Psalms 62 and 2. It says, he only is my rock and my salvation. He is my defense. And I shall not be greatly moved. Mm -mm -mm. And, and that's so important. And even you say, shall not be greatly moved. And even the scripture lets us know not to get into sudden fear. Right. When news comes suddenly to us, we, our, our heart beats fast. We, we're like, oh my God, oh my God, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? Mm -hmm. But we still have to remember who is in charge. Yes. And then you spoke of the tongue. And, and I, I, I love the idea that you brought up about what we speak. What we speak is mm -hmm. what God should, is giving us to speak. Right. It said that we should speak as God, that when we speak, speak as uh, those that speak about things that are not as no, though they, they are. were. Amen. And that's what Jesus did when he was down on this earth. He spoke of things that were not as though they were. And just like when he healed people, yes. he simply said, be healed. When he did that, yes. they weren't healed yet. But after he spoke the word and the Bible lets us know that whatever we speak and whatever we pray for, mm -hmm. believing and shall not doubt in his heart, we, that we shall have exactly what we have asked of him. Yes. And we have to come to the realization that what we speak, it goes out in spirit. We have angels encamped around each and every one of us that believe in God and stand on his word. But the angels cannot do any more than our faith, our belief allows them to do. So when we speak the word, we either loose them to handle the situation or we bind them to stay back from it. Right. And I don't know about you, but I want my angels that are encamped around about me to be free to handle every situation, to do anything that I need to do. That's the reason why the scripture says, stand still yeah. and see, see the, the salvation, salvation of, of the Lord. Lord. 
And if we can simply learn how to stand on his word and let God be God and let us be believers in him, he will handle every situation. And then the, I'm going to go to this scripture, Ephesians. I love this scripture so much. Ephesians 3, or the third chapter, and the 20th verse. Now, well, I'm sorry, with that. now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly more than we can ask to think. Yes. Do you know how much I love that? I, I've always considered myself to have a big mind. I can think about some, some magnanimous things, some grandeur things. Mm -hmm. I, my mind stretches out over so, so many things. I've even had people tell me, you know, you're, you're thinking way ahead of your time. That's fine. But see, he can do exceeding abundantly more than I could ever ask or think. Yes. And because he even said in his word that uh, my thoughts, not his thoughts, neither my words, his words, but his, his thoughts and the things that he does is so far above mine as the heaven is above the earth. But then we, we say, well, okay, he says he can do that. But here's the catchphrase in there. Mm -hmm. Going back to Ephesians 3 and 20, the end of it says, according to the power. Think about it. According to the, the power, according to the strength, according to the faith, according to the full belief of God's word that worketh within you. Yes. So it is according to what works on the inside of you. And this is the reason, again, why the scripture says that whatever you pray for, if you should believe it and not doubt it in your heart, that you shall have whatever you asked for. And this is the thing that we forget, for we uh, wrestle not against flesh and blood, yes. but against powers and principalities. Satan does not care if you get up in the morning and say, Lord, I thank you for another day. He doesn't care if you say, Lord, you know, now I lay me down to sleep at night. <laughs> he doesn't care if you show up at church. He doesn't care if you give some tithes and some offerings. But if he can change your mindset, yeah. if he can change what it is that you think and cause you to back off of your faith. Mm -hmm. But if we have faith as a grain of mustard seed, I think that as mustard Seed. What do we do with seed? We're supposed to take seed, we're supposed to plant it, and we're supposed to let it grow and let it flourish. Yes. So we are supposed to take the, the, the faith that God has given us, for every man has been given the measure of faith. If we take that faith and, and use it as a seed and let it grow and grow faith to faith, year after year, going to a higher step, a higher plane, a, a higher principality in God, then there is nothing that shall be impossible to us. Yes. And you know what? I'm just, I'm going to use this phrase, I'm just crazy enough to believe his word. Mm -hmm. I'm just foolish enough to believe his word. Yes, uh, somebody out, out there may be saying, well, he shouldn't say that, but even Paul said that I'm a fool for Christ. Yes. And sometimes when you go down into the amount of faith that God wants us to have, you look crazy to the world. Mm -hmm. we, can, we can afford to look crazy to the world if we're standing on God's word. And he even said in John 14 and 14, if you so asked anything in my, my name, name, I will do it. Amen. And, if, and what he's telling us is, if we ask anything in his name, and in, in the authority of his name, yes. that he's going to do it if it is within his will. Yes. Now I want you to think about it. The scripture also lets us know that he will give us the desires of our heart. Yes. Well, people say, well, whatever you, whatever you desire, whatever you want, he's going to give it to you. But if you think about it on a slightly different way, mm -hmm. he will give you what to desire for. Amen. Think about that. You got to be in God. God what will saying. give you yes. what to desire for. Hallelujah. Amen. And if he gives you what to desire for, he can't do anything but let you have it. Because he's the one that told you you need to walk this thing. Amen. And when it comes over, we can handle that thing like the word of God says. We can be just like Elisha. Yes. When he saw Elijah being taken up. He, uh, Elijah threw that mantle down. Elisha got it. He went over to the river. Jordan, he flung it out, and when the river parted, he said, I got it, and it works. We need to stand up in front of the face of the enemy, yes. in front of the face of Satan, and all his little demonic uh, imps that walk around with him, yes. and say, I've got this thing, Amen. and it works, Amen. because I believe in the Word of God. Yes. And you've got to know that when you believe, there's nothing that should be able to, turn, to, to deter you. Wow. And even Paul let us know. We learned he was not ashamed of the gospel. 
He let us know it continually. And then he turned around and said, I am fully persuaded. Yes. I, he was so fully persuaded that he understood that whatever he asked God for, that it was in his interest, God was going to handle it. Amen. So I know I don't have to back down because God is backing me up. And this is some of the things that we need to understand. So when they talk about this coronavirus, uh, COVID-19, whatever you want to call it, mm-hmm. I call it infirmity. I call it a plague. And Sister Washington, just like you said in Psalms 91, the scripture lets me know that a thousand will fall by my side, 10,000 mm-hmm. by my right hand, but nothing mm-hmm. shall by any means hurt me. That it should just brush past me. I'll be able to walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Yes. And when I walk through, I will fear no evil. Yes. Because fear comes from Satan. And if God has not given us the spirit of fear, then who did give it to us? Right. It certainly wasn't God. So if, if you're not for God's side, you are against God's side. If you're for God, you stand on his word. If you let fear come in, if you let doubt come in, I even preach the message, if you're living down, you're already out. Yes. And these are some of the things that we have to think of. I, I'm, I'm going to slow down again. Sister Lung, I'm going to give it back to you <laughs> and, and let you say what you need to say. No, you can keep on preaching now because that's so, uh, so inspiring. And uh, there's another scripture that I, I was us in God is my salvation and my glory, the rock of my strength and my refuge is in God. And so, you know, we got to remember that, uh, you know, we got to remember who God is. That was uh, uh, Psalm 62 and 7. It says, trust in him at all times, you people pour out your heart unto him. You know, and then um, that's uh, Psalm 63. So it's just telling us that we got to trust God. We say we believe, we say we have faith, and now's the time that this faith should be manifested all the time that God has given us. He says, trust not in oppression and become not vain in the robbery and riches and things that's going on in the world today. So we, we, so if we don't look at the physical or what's going on, we got to trust in God because he's supernatural. He's got all the power. And, and, you know, just like you said, if we can ask it in Jesus' name and we're going to be in his will, we're in his will. So we're going to ask the right thing and he's going to bless us in every way and protect us. Our loved ones, you know, we have loved ones all across the country. We know, I know you do. I, I do too. And God is over here, over there, in my house, in your house. He's just everywhere. But the mm-hmm. prayer of the righteous availeth much. And that's one thing that we just got to pray. Even if it's individual, it's together. We need to just keep acknowledging God. Because God, God is already going to deliver us. And we already know that. So just for waiting on him and, and knowing that he's going to protect us and keep us. And he's going to bring us through this just like he has done for each and every one of us in all of our lives. And and that makes so much of a difference. We have to trust in him in all things. And if we continue to stand on his word, and, and this is the reason why uh, the old devil doesn't want us to get together. He doesn't want us talking about the goodness of God. He doesn't want to talk about how he's brought us out. But I'm telling you, when you do that, that we overcome by the word of our testimonies. And when when I hear what God has done for you, I know he can do the same thing for me. That means I can live on his word. And then, and, But if we back down off of it, then that's where we get messed up. Right. And I was thinking about the first Psalms where it said, Blessed is the man that walketh not, not in the, the counsel, counsel of the ungodly, ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of oh, the Lord. Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. Yes. So that's the thing about it. We have to stay in his word. And, you know, and it's, I mean, you also, when it comes to talking about prayer, it's so that a uh, man ought to always pray and not say, pray without ceasing. Now, a lot of times we think well, the only time the prayer really counts is when we get down on our knees or mm-hmm. we, we get prostrate or, or, or we're in a special place. We're in our prayer closet or wherever it is that we like to have that private prayer. Mm-hmm. But you know what? While I'm driving down the street, I'm, Lord, I just want to thank you, Jesus. 
Yes. Lord, I thank you for just keeping me. I thank you for just guiding me. I thank you for keeping all these strange cars, these drivers that don't yes. know how to drive. Thank you for keeping them away from me. Mm-hmm. And I look in the mirror in the morning and I say, you don't have to worry about a thing because God is leading the way for my steps out ordered by Amen. him. And Amen. because they're ordered by him, he will not lead me down the path of unrighteousness, but he's going to keep me in his path the way I'm supposed to be. Yes. And this is what we need to learn how to do according to his word. Amen. I, I, I thought you were going to say something there. <laughs> well, I did. I did want to um, kind of go over that because Psalm seems like to be this. It's a place to settle in. Um, it's uh, Psalms 71 in thee, O Lord, do I put my trust? Let me let me never be put to confusion, incline thy ear to me mm-hmm. and save me. And then it goes on to tell us that thou has given commandment to save me. It's like we're already going to be saved. He didn't say, I'm going to give commandment to save you. He says, He says, Thou has given me a commandment to save thee already. So God has already put put it out for us that we are saved and protected from these things. And I know that we're running over a little bit <laughs> because this is on on Facebook, so we can leave it there. Um, we want those that do have Comcast to be able, if you want to hear this message again, it'll, it, I'm going to just allow this to run um, throughout uh, the next four weeks. So because we need to hear this kind of message to, to encourage us and to keep us strong in our hearts. Sometimes we, you know, you look at the physical, you get kind of nervous. But if you have a, a good word coming forth and, and you keep hearing that word, it's just going to build your strength up. And for those that don't even know God, it's time. It's time now. And I believe that there are many people that are seeking God right now. Uh, so um, can we ask you to say that prayer, uh, Dr. Milburn? Yes, and, and I just want to add this one thing very quickly, since you brought up that we are this from the Old Testament. Mm-hmm. Also in the Old Testament, it said, by his stripes, we, oh, yes. we are healed. Yes. Not going to be, Not going to but be. we are. are healed. Yes. And we have to remember that that the healing is already there. Yes. All you have you, to Lord. do is just accept it. Amen. And on that note, Heavenly Father, we just thank you today, Lord. Glory to your name, Jesus. We yeah. praise you. We lift you up. We magnify you with our, all of our being right now. Yeah. God, we just love you so much, Lord, for just keeping us through this very hour. Yes, and we know that if we continue to stand on your word, that you will continue to lead us, to guide us, to show us that which we need to do, O oh Lord. Yes. So right now, God, in the mighty name of Jesus, name of Jesus, in your name, we rebuke Satan. We stand back from him, Lord, because your words shall prevail in all things. So even as we have called on you on this day, we ask that you will open our minds, minds, open our hearts, O Lord. Open us up to the faith that our faith might grow. We know in the scripture, the man asked, Lord, you know, uh, I I believe, help thou my unbelief. So any unbelief out there right now, we say touch right now. Yes, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus, by your spirit, O Lord. Touch right now. Go out to the highways, the byways. Go over the airways, Lord. Touch everyone that is in the sound of our voice, that is listening to these programs, that desires to have faith, and let them know that right now, oh God, regardless of what's going on, that we are healed. Because you said it, we accept it, we receive it in Jesus' name. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. We thank you so much. If you wanted to close the program out right now and just let them know again who you are. Well, again, I, I am uh, Elder J.D. Milvin, Dr. Milvin, or whatever you want to call me. It's fine. You can call me brother. I'm happy with that. But uh, remember, whatever you do, do it in faith, according to the word of the Lord. When Satan uh, comes to you to tell you something, you have to go back to the scripture and tell him it is written. And what the Lord says, you can't do anything about it because his word is truth and every man alive when it comes to that. But stand in faith. If you know these things, if you believe these things, whatever you ask for in faith, not be, not uh, disbelieving in your heart that you shall have them. And whatever you do, do it from the heart. 
We thank God for this program. We thank God for Sister London allowing us to do this. And until next time, stand on this word. Have faith in God. Have a good day, and God bless you. Amen. Thank you so much, um, Dr. Milburn.